Okay, we're waiting for the stream to start proper. I'm waiting to have some audio. Do we have audio? We have audio, good. So uh, this is a pair of Philips uh, something or the other wireless headphones, uh, model number SHD8600 slash 10 uh, and they have a very obvious issue and that's that the power switch has fallen off. If we try the other scene then you might be able to see that uh, this is where the power switch is supposed to go and uh, there's just nothing there so uh, these guys don't turn on whatsoever. Uh, so I want to uh, take this apart to see if there's any decent way of just uh, kind of bridging over that power switch to see if uh, we can resurrect these. They come with uh, this uh, charging base uh, and the idea is you have a couple of rechargeable nickel something of the other batteries in these you put them there when they're not in use. So I'm thinking the power switch is probably not all that important since you can just keep them on the base uh, when they're not in use. Uh, the only question is how energy efficient the charging base is going to be. If it's just feeding a constant current into these, uh, it's just going to uh, be not very economical having these uh, sitting on the charger all the time. Uh, but uh, we'll have to see where we get. Perhaps we can even find some a suitable replacement switch for these guys. Uh, so let's just get started. I have no idea uh, how to actually get inside of them. Uh, we have a few suspicious square holes going on here. We have these headphone speakers articulate a bit. So let's get rid of those. Okay, we have two screws on there, so let's just start there. People are showing up in chat. Hello. To quickly recap for those who are just joining us, uh, the power switch on these headphones is broken and uh, we're going to see if we can replace it with something. Uh, these were discarded, they come out of a the trash, they're rather cheap, I think under 50 euros new. So they're definitely not worth fixing, but we're going to fix them anyway if it's somewhat easy. Well, right, that's a decently sized driver of these. Completely plastic construction, of course. These are cheaper consumer products. Uh, they're never going to sound good no matter what. Well, some Philips headphones can actually sound good, but I doubt these are going to be. Uh, top shelf stuff. So we have another screw there. I get a bit more zoom. There we go. I'll have to try and keep that in frame. Get you guys a bit more exposure as well. There we go. Someone in chat is saying Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas or Boxing Day or whatever you're celebrating. We're all here to have a good time. So I think uh, we have a separate piece going around here which I think just snaps in place. So a bit of knifery or two, separate that away. Yep, there we go that's separating. I wonder if we have more screws hiding underneath this foam. It doesn't feel like it wants to really come. So, oh yeah, there's the screw under the foam. We probably have one on the other side as well then. Let's see. This is why do they always do this? This isn't even a visible part of a device. Do you really have to hide your screws? Come on. Out you come. Well, it's a bit wide for that. Let's try a screwdriver. 
Oh yeah, that's another screwdriver. There's probably one right at the top as well. But, uh, let's just undo these and see if we get anywhere. Hopefully there's not one at the top, but I think there's going to be one at the top. Which is just going to make us uh, rip all the foam out. Which is really annoying. There are two different kinds of screws in these as well. A shorter part for the inside and a longer part for the outside. I think we're probably well served by just ripping this foam. Ah, off right away. I think right away is going to be a screw. The foam is so thick you can't... I don't think we can actually feel anything through it. No, this isn't. Oh, yeah, I think perhaps we'll have one right there. So if we'll just cut the foam there, we won't have to just rip so much of the adhesive, which is never going to go on properly again. Oh, uh, yeah, I can see a screw. I can see a screw in there. Let's just undo that then. I think this whole frame assembly is going to come off and uh, take us one step closer to the PCB with the faulty power switch on it. What's the chat say? Chat doesn't say too much. Something in a foreign language. Camera overload. Yeah, I can't be bothered making new scenes for this, or you'll just have to make deal with the two unused microscope cameras being off in the corner there. I have a fancy CPU in this PC, so we might as well put it to good use, right? Okay, let's see if we can get this plastic thing out of the way. It feels improper. I don't think there's going to be anything underneath that. I don't dare rip this thing off. Or do I? No, I think if we rip the headband off, we're never going to get it back on again. So I think it's just a question of uh, using some violence to get this off. Yeah. This is ruining my knife blade more than anything else. It really feels as if there's something else holding this on. We don't have another screw up here, do we? Oh, we have another screw there. We're really getting screwed. Not shafted, but screwed. Wow, I did not see that coming. That's too many screws. Well, good on Phillips for making sure it uh, holds together. Okay, let's give that another go. Perhaps it'll come nicely now. Perhaps it won't. Oh no, that's, that's popped out. Something still holding it on at the top. Oh no, there we go. That's come apart nicely. Right, so we've basically exploded this thing now. We have a bunch of pieces going everywhere. Oh god, I don't want to 
take this mechanism apart more than I need to. There's the PCB we're trying to get at. I'm gonna have to bring you guys down a bit. There we go. Also, I can't see anything. So, right, this is just poked in there. Oh, that's a destroyed password right there. There isn't much going on on this PCB, so the actual receiver has to be on the other side. That's odd. This is just like a charging PCB with a blue LED. We probably don't need that LED at all. We can probably <coughs> get rid of it. <coughs> The power switch, yeah, we can use our fancy, expensive, completely broken microscope to have a closer look at how this is wired up. Oh, this is so horrible. Ugh. I am so disappointed in this thing. Let's see what we have going on this tiny PCB. So that's a power switch. So the, this pin here isn't going anywhere, so it's going to be connecting between the two out at once. And it seems as if this hasn't just... Uh, we don't just have a physically broken power switch there, I think we have a broken solder joint on it as well. I think we have a huge gap on that one joint. Yeah. See that uh, black ring around that solder joint? That is uh, completely broken. Let's see if I have like a camera for that. Where are we? Where are we? That's a broken solder joint. If I've ever seen one. Common failure point on stuff like power switches. Just a big air gap around, there's not going to be any current flowing through that. So what's probably happened is uh, uh, this solder joint has failed and uh, the previous owner of these headphones just got to completely brutal on the power switch since it was just working intermittently and uh, finally destroyed the power switch. So this switch is uh, definitely uh, beyond saving it seems to be. Yeah, there are springs poking out for it, so yeah. I wonder if that's... That spring makes me suspect this is just a spring-loaded thing. And it just signals too. Signals to the uh, CPU to turn on or off. That would be a bit annoying. Uh, but we'll have to see what happens if we just uh, bridge over uh, two of those uh, joints. Uh, <laughs> oh, that microscope is horrifying. No, that's the wrong one. Okay. Uh, right, so let's just get to work on this. Someone in chat is saying thumbs up, and yeah, that's that's a nice gesture. Ah, come on, stay in place. I just want to gob some solder over you, like so. Uh, there we go. So we're just gonna. Bring in, let's use the ridiculously big solder for this. Haha. -ha. It's thick and girthy. 
and we will just uh, do that. There we go. No, that's too much. There we go. Ah, the Russian flux. This stuff is like 40 years old. Mmm, smells lovely. So, uh, if we're lucky, uh, these w should work now uh, if we apply uh, battery power to them, as well as power to the base there. Uh, the base has a blue LED on it, which is going to let us know if they were connected. We also have a blue LED on the headphones. So, if this works, we're going to have two blue LEDs going off. If this doesn't work, uh, we're... I don't know what's going to happen. Someone says stream crashed. It doesn't seem crashed to me. Uh, I'm looking for power. So I'm going to have power going to the base. Let's uh, get some batteries in the headphones. We have a blue LED going there. Those are blinking. I have no idea if... Uh, they're going boop, boop, boop at me. I have no idea if that's uh, good or bad. The base is still blinking, I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that. I wonder if this is actually a spring-loaded thing. But so let's just feed some signal into our base and see. Let's see what it does. I'll have to fetch some sort of audio source that's not super important for keeping the stream going. I have a big box of random media players. Let's see what we can find. We should have a mini disc player. We have mini discs. A big honking power supply. And, oh yes, a mini disc player. Now we're talking. Let's plug our mini disc player in. <laughs> and get some music going. I would run this off a of battery, but it uses some kind of weird special battery. How do you operate this? How do you operate this? There we go. There's a disc already loaded. That's making big noises. Okay, I think that's plan. So, I'll just have to fetch a wire. And plug us in. The RCA is into the base plugged in, and uh, we have uh, headphones slash remote. This thing has so many. Line out. Okay, so there should be audio coming out of there. Maximum volume. And I can hear nothing out of the headphones. We do have a solid blue LED now, though. What's going on? I am hearing nothing. Let's uh, reset these. So I have a blue LED. So 
lead blue LED on the base. And they go boop, boop, boop. So I think this is a momentary uh, power switch. So we're going to want to uh, get rid of our solder blob and uh, just to uh, poke something across there. And that makes everything a bit annoying. Oh god, I'm melting my... Ah, I don't... I, I'm melting my wired headphone wire with a solder and iron. That's, that's not good. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, get batteries in. We did get rid of a blob here. Yeah? So we'll uh, poke, poke the batteries in and just uh, short that out with something. For a second, what suitable implement do I have? A knife. So I'll just uh, go boop. And that's doing something, huh? Oh, I'm hearing music. Lovely, lovely Mindisk music. So, these do work. Oh, yeah. That's how you do it. That's how you wear completely disassembled headphones, uh, but these do work, so that's good. Now we just need to figure out a way to uh, install a new a momentary power switch for these. That's going to be a bit annoying. Because I don't want to... Ah, I don't really have any good momentary power switch. I don't think so. Hmm... That's a thinker. How do we make a suitable moment repair switch? What can we... What trash PCB can we pick? Some decent moment repair switch out of. Where's that? There's a trash PCB pile. I have no idea what uh, we have, which is actually going to have... Oh, we... oh, yeah. We should have a trashed stereo. Come on. Aha! That's exactly what we need. Never underestimate the trash pile. Oh yes. Oh yes. So this is the PCB from a Sony CD player. And uh, let's carefully slide this. In fact, we don't need to have a headphones powered while we're soldering on them. So, yes, let's uh, steal one of the buttons off of this. Huh? I've got a new keyboard here. Well, new from the trash. And it's so much nicer than my old keyboard, which didn't have a shift key. I can now actually use hotkeys to switch between scenes, which I couldn't before because the old keyboard was so garbage. It wouldn't work half the time. So, we're just going to steal... Someone says how to mount, and I'm very happy you said that because I'm gonna preheat the hot hot glue gun. Thank you, chat, for reminding me we need this because this poor broken thing takes a while to get up to temperature. In fact, I, this poor hot glue gun is very old, very cheap, and it's. Uh, progressively becoming higher and higher wattage. 
uh, every time I use it. So at some point, it's just going to go up in smoke because of the PTC is failing. Someone says epoxy is a better solution. Yeah, but I hate the smell of epoxy. And uh, I'm not going to sell, <coughs> sell these or anything. So uh, they're just for my personal use. And I, I'm, I'm a very light-handed person. I don't put a lot of wear on the things I own. Uh, so hot glue is going to last just fine. I do agree that epoxy or some kind of silicone stuff is going to give a better better quality adhesion, had adhesion but uh, hot glue is fine for me. We'll just take a random button. I have no idea which one this is, but it's like from the big cluster at the top, so it's probably been like track number buttons which have never been used. There you go. So now we just need to figure out a way to mount this somewhere. And I'm thinking we can't really put it. How can we put it where it used to be? Uh, like there's going to be a bit of a problem since the since the uh, charging thing on the base is right there by the power switch uh, stuff. Uh, this is difficult to frame. Uh, since we have this going here, uh, we can't really build anything tall in that area of the. Uh, device. So getting a power button right around there is going to be really annoying. I think we might be better off just to kind of putting it to the side of there. Hmm. Someone says maybe you should make sure and check the burrow before soldering. I'm not sure what you're talking about with burrow. Is that some meme I'm not uh, read into? Well, let's make sure this uh, button actually works before we uh, try and install it. Uh, so to anyone who's uh, just joining and has uh, no idea what's going on, uh, we're repairing the, these wireless headphones. They have a broken uh, momentary power button and uh, we're just putting something else where that used to be. So now we're checking if our second hand used button is any good. This is like 20 years old. And it seems to be working just fine. I'm just using diode check on the meter. And it's it's working fine. Sorry I can't get that properly in frame for you. This desk is complete chaos right now. Uh, but we are going to have to like drill a small hole in this in order to get our wiring inside. So, hmm, how do we best do that? Where do we best put our hole? We need to very carefully penetrate these headphones. It's going to be a bit annoying since uh, this mechanism goes right inside of this and it does that pretty much all the way around and uh, we can't really put it on here because we have like an external shell that goes over there which is going to make it really annoying to uh, get at hmm. that's a bit annoying uh, So this PCB goes in there, roughly. Can we at all fit it, like, roughly where the old one used to be and just use a fingernail to poke? Oh, that's not going to be much good. I'd rather have this, like, externally mounted. But, hmm... I think we might have a chance of getting it just about here. We'll have to see how they uh, sit on the base. I'm completely abusing the wiring on these right now. 
say? Hi, can we get this? Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna work. So we have a cutout on the internal main thingy here for the PCB, and that goes just above where the base ends. So we can put, drill a hole for us, which right about there, and wire it up, and uh, that's gonna be good. We can just glue it to the outside, basically. So I'm I'm gonna do that. Uh, let's. Uh, Here's a screw driving drill. Let's find a suitable drill to drill with. Let's consult our cheap Lidl pack of various drills and bits. Uh, this one looks the right size. Yeah, we just need to get a hole for the wires to come through, and I think we're gonna uh, actually mount the switch. Or do we want to mount the switch on the inside? No, because this switch has a rather short knob on it, so I don't think that's gonna be successful. We, we really do need to just uh, hot snuff the switch to the outside. So I'm judging that a good place for wires to go is uh, there. Let's let's just check twice. Drill once. Eh, yeah, yeah. That's that's good. Like. Yeah. There we go. Oh yeah, let's uh, put the drill back. This is precision engineering. <laughs> you spit. Right, now we're gonna need uh, some form of wiring. What's uh, we can use some wiring off of our Sony CD player board again because this is nice and multi strand and just exactly what we need. This one is the right length. Uh, snips. This is going a lot better thus far than I dared hope for. Okay, the, this thing, thing has been in the trash for a long time, so I just want to make sure this piece of wire isn't completely destroyed, and one of the three is, so we'll just get rid of a dis destroyed wire there, throw that away. So this is the power switch wire, it's, uh, yeah, it's long enough to connect up to a switch, so we'll uh, strip it on one end and uh, uh, poke it through the hole and cut it to length and solder it to the pads where our old switch uh, used to go. We're going to have to remove the old switch uh, uh, just in case it uh, mechanically fails and shorts out. Because uh, as we saw when we tried to just short the original toggle switch out, uh, it uh, prevented the headphone from turning on. So I don't want to risk that happening. Ah. This is definitely how you're supposed to do this. You like hold the big plastic melty thing in one hand and then you use the hot melty solder device. There you go. And the switch it comes off. So this is the original switch. It's uh, completely garbage. Like uh, that's where the uh, toggle pin used to go and there's just a spring poking out the top there so this thing is completely destroyed and useless rip forever 
And now we need to get our wires installed and cut them to length. And uh, uh, we're almost done. So that's going to go like uh, so ish. We need them to be that long. So I'm cutting these to a specific length of a uh, vat. Okay. Strip so well now. Two actions to solder these. I'm going to use the third hand because uh, it's just going to be annoying trying to hand hold everything. Hand holding? Lude. Right, so we'll uh, tin the pads, use, well, let's just use the giant solder again because that's what's close at hand. Poof. Poof. No, no, don't short out the wrong thing. Oh, that's the same thing, actually. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's get a little bit of flux on there to you. Yeah, so we can just reflow that on without having to pre-tin the wire. There we go. Where did my wire go? Where's my wire? Oh, I can't find this is such a specific length. I don't want to... There we go. So we can just solder this on. Yeah, I, I can't do it under a microscope. You'll just have to uh, look at the distance, sorry. It's too full here, so I'm getting some flux into the wire there to make it easier now. Just reflowing that on there. One wire. Und. Zwei wires. I'm not German. There we go. That's soldered in place. I don't think it's shorted out. So if we put batteries in this now and uh, uh, short these two wires together, the blue LED should go flash. Let's uh, try that before we start mounting everything together, just in case I accidentally shorted something out. So the blue LED should go flash when we do this. And it does. And if we do that again, it goes out, on, off, good. So this is perfectly operational. So now we just need to manage to basically mount this and uh, install our new switch with hot glue. So how does this go together? Like so. So we need to bring the wire under the board right here because the board is pretty much flush against the edge out of there. So we'll do just that. Fold and uh, out through the hole you go. I think I just got flux all over my fingers. I did not, that's a miracle. Flux fingers is worse than Cheeto fingers. Alright. This is. Oh yeah, I cut it to reasonable length. Snap, crackle, pop. This board is not positively fixed down at all, which is not a very good design. Uh, that's pretty bad. Seriously. This just kind of bends in place. Now that can't be right. What's going wrong? Is my wire like pinching against something? Oh yeah, it is pinching against something. That's why it's bending. That's like little plastic 
thing sticking up underneath there. So we need to write the wire around that and then we'll be good. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the board mounts fine even with our wire on there. Uh, let's uh, have a look under the microscope just to make sure. Oh, this microscope is horrifying. Uh, just to make sure we don't have any other solder breakages. Uh, since the pads which had a broken solder joint, uh, there's a decent chance there are going to be other broken solder joints, for instance on the charging connector, but uh, uh, that does look good. I don't think that's going to be an issue. And there you can see if we are oh, crap, I didn't. That's not a hot key for the microscope view. There you can see my wiring that we soldered in. Uh, no shorts or anything. So that's all good. That is all good. Ugh. Ugh, that, that fucking microscope. Oh, there it goes for monetization. Uh, right, so it's basically just a question of reassembling this thing now and uh, then installing our uh, new power switch on the outside. And reassemble is going to be a lot of fun since I haven't looked at how this started out at all. And we have like this uh, very intricate mechanism going on for holding the speaker tilty thing. So... Uh, I have no idea how this is supposed to go together. Let's just, like... There's an axle there, which goes into an axle holdery thingamabob. We don't want this wiring to be rubbing against the battery positive, that's not productive at all. So yeah, that goes roughly there and doesn't stay in place at all. Oh god. The Chinese person assembling these, wow. They have my admiration. How is this supposed to work? There's so much, like, loose wiring going everywhere. Come on. Okay, I think we're kind of getting there-ish. Okay. Almost. Like something snagging horribly. This thing is supposed to be mobile, but it isn't. Is it upside down? It could be upside down. Let's try it this way around. But I don't think that's right. That does allow it some mobility. I think that might be right. But, oh, we need to strip this a bit. I don't like the fact that we've got a bunch of loose wires going in this, uh, as well as like a tilting mechanism, because uh, tilting me mechanisms are basically unsharpened scissors. Okay, but that, I'm fairly confident that's the way that's supposed to go in because it's tilting fine. In uh, the one axis, it does tilt. So yeah, we'll just go with that. And that means this thing goes on the. Oh God, I have redist. I have not destroyed everything. Ah, this is finicky. Highly finicky business. Ah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. This. Come on. Come on. That's one thing going right and 
this is supposed to very easily slide into place, but it is not sliding into place easily. And which way that there's a switch for the battery opening thing which we need to make sure goes in the right spot and that's that spot. Why is this ah come on. It's just a question of using force to get this. Oh, we got one step closer. What's preventing us from getting where we want to get now? It's making crackling noises and it's like very slowly coming together. It feels like a wire is stuck between something, it's not, oh yeah, there's a wire, there's a wire. Uh, I bet if we just poke that aside uh, with some tweezers, this is going to be a lot happier. I was wrong, yeah, it made no difference. There's something really wrongish going on in this general area. Uh, what's going wrong? Ah, that was a snapping noise. Well, the wiring seems to be in the right place. As oh god, this is exploding. Oh, I've managed to get this big mess of wires here for the other sides all tangled up. Oh, because it's come apart. There, no wonder. Uh, our wire stretching. Ugh. There we go. That's going to make all the difference. And that's probably going to be re requiring some taping. Okay, let's try that again without uh, accidentally ripping the wiring. Like, ah. Come on. This wiring is not playing nicely. Not playing nicely at all. Stay away. Okay, that's that feels better. We have our tilt. Now we should be able to sneak this on here. And that locks in there. And folds down there. And it made snapping noises. And this switch thing is not wanting to play nice at all. Why are we not going together? This is really confusing. The mechanism is not snagging. There's something getting in the way. Right around there. That's really confusing because I can't see anything that would be getting in the way. What's getting in the way? Oh, I think we might need to write that yellow wire differently. I think the yellow wire is supposed to go there. So a screw main to that. I think it's supposed to go on the other side of that. So we'll just uh, do that change. Like so. seems to have a holder for the yellow wire in the bottom there. Come on. Go 
between the pins. There are two black, nearly invisible pins down there, which are, there we go, which are supposed to be holding the wiring. There we go. There you can just barely make over the two pins that are holding the yellow and black wires in place. And I think these were snagging because there's an edge here of plastic. Okay, let's see. I, I think this might be uh, the money shots. We're not snagging on any more wiring. I don't think we are. Come on. Snap. Come on. What's getting in the way? Something's getting horribly, horribly in the way. That's made no difference. Ah, that's super annoying. I have no idea. I have no idea what's getting in the way. The PCB is on properly. It really feels as if there's a wire getting pinched, but there's no wire getting pinched. The PCB is in place. I am very confused. It's not snagging off a mechanism either, because that remains mobile all the time. This is why this is not worth fixing. Like, we haven't even gotten to jury rigging the power switch yet. Ah, it's just collapsing on itself. Maybe this is upside down or something. I'm not sure. No, I think this is supposed to be this way around. Oh, is it? I'm quite sure this mechanism does not fit the other way around. No, it does not fit at all the other way around, so... The tilting mechanism is in the wrong, right way around. Uh. How on earth is this thing supposed to go together? It's snagging on some minute detail. Some absolutely tiny little thing. But the mechanism is moving fine. Ah! This is terribly frustrating. I have no idea what it's snagging on. For the life of me, I can't figure out what it's snagging on. Eh, I, I, let's just force this thing in place. I, I cannot be bothered thinking any more about this. You're going to gather whether or not you do it nicely. Sorry. Snap, crackle, pop. Snap, crackle, pop, snap, crackle, pop, gate together. Well, now it's not going at all. <laughs> ah. Okay. Let's just get those screws in there, and this will be good to go. Bloody hell. And I failed with the open thing. Come on. And maybe it's the open thing that's failing, actually. 
Maybe we need to get rid of this. No. Maybe we need to force that. Now the open thing doesn't work at all. It went together, it went snap, but now the open thing is uh, completely seized. So I need to get that back together, back apart, huh? How can the open thing not be working? Snap, I think, I think the open mechanism might be the thing that's making our lives horrible right now. Yeah, like you. Yeah. There's a tiny pin, tiny pin on this thing, that needs to be just uh, a fraction of a millimeter to the right in order to actually fit together properly. I'm not sure how that's supposed to. Can we? We can move the mechanism here. No. When all this is done, there's going to be a wire snapped inside. I can almost guarantee it. Come on. Okay. 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 I think I think we got it. The opening mechanism works. You can see a little lever in there moving. <sighs> okay. Okay. It's together. The mechanism works. We don't have any huge amount of wires snagging. Let's get those screws in there bloody quick before... Oh, I've melted my... I've, I've I've melted my computer mouse with the hot hot snot thing. Oh uh, well, that one came out of the trash too. Hot snot thing. Glue pistol. Hot glue gun. Hot glue gun. That's the proper term. Oh, wow! That that was a challenge. Not so much a technical challenge, but a challenge in Zen mastery. A challenge in patience. A challenge in dedication to repairing cheap consumer garbage that uh, does not uh, need, well, warrant repairing. Okay, final screw of that. No, is that never I don't even think that's a final screw, there's a bunch more. You go there. I should test this before putting all the screws in, but I just want to make sure the mechanism got, doesn't pop out again. <sighs> okay. Okay. Right. It's time for a moment of truth, so we, if we put some batteries in and uh, let's just do a completely live test, I want to see if it plays properly, so we'll get our mini disc play. Poke that in there. Power up the base. Then get the batteries. And short those together. Come on. We have a blue LED. Do I have audio? Do we have audio? We have stereo audio. Lovely. Listen to that.
because beef when it's not loud, you're getting louder. Okay, it's good. We haven't ruined the wiring. That's excellent. That means we can uh, uh, just uh, put the speaker in now so that we don't rip its wiring by mistake. Because God knows the wiring for this thing has been abused enough already. And uh, then we can get to actually hot gluing the... Uh, new power button in place. Why is the chat talking about burning trees? We're not burning anything here. Don't talk about burning things. Well, I'm holding something that's annoyed me and is essentially made out of oil. Don't tempt me. Ah, foam. Foam a bit. Go back in place. There we go. And this speaker goes. Is that the right way around? Let's uh, get rid of this as well. Need to clean them anyway. Let's make sure we don't make the speaker upside down. No, we're not. Good. I can imagine these headphones being reasonably comfortable when they're properly put together. I have that nice, art nice articulating thing going. The sad part about recycling old headphones and stuff is they're always so nasty. Like there's a bunch of someone else's head garbage stuck to these. But I'm very good at cleaning things. We're going to make them nice and shiny. Nice and shiny. Oh, that plastic threaded screw did not go into the right thread. That feels horrible. Ugh. Okay. So that's together. It articulates as it's supposed to. Feels worse, a lot worse than the other one because the wiring's all mangled up, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so now we just need to make our power switch assembly. Where did the power switch go? There's a power switch. I'm thinking, hmm, we could drill four tiny holes around here and uh, basically use the legs of a switch to just mechanically hold it in place. I think I have a tiny hand drill. Somewhere around right here, that could actually work really well. Let's see what the uh, smallest drill bit I have for this thing is. I should have some, like, really small. There we go. Let's see if we can manage to mount that as well. I'm not sure. If we have a fitting chuck. These chucks are all way too big. I think this is the tiniest one, which has the giant 2.5 mil drill mounted already. I think that'll work on the tiny, tiny drill. That goes there. Where did the end bit go? There's the end bit. Tiny drill. Goes in there. Come on, you can grip it. It's gripping it. Nice. So let's just drill four tiny holes around our big hole. The more holes you have, the better. So, yeah. 
like one there. You should not underestimate the power of these hand drills. They're excellent for stuff like this. God, I've just drilled straight into the wiring. But I'm sure that's fine. So we'll make you another hole like there. Oh, God. number two and we'll make hole number three and four as well there this cheaper Chinese hand drill is not straight at all it's wobbling all over hole. And let's make one final. One final hole for a total of five holes. Which is more holes than I usually drill in my projects because I don't like making holes. Because I usually fail horribly at making holes and then everything just falls apart and I have to trash whatever I was working on. There we go. <laughs> That's a bunch of holes, which are not lining up very well at all with anything, but that's fine. So we can just poke this, like, inside. These connect between these two pins, so we can just, like, get one wire poking out. Okay, we need to strip this slightly shorter, or it's just not going to fit properly together. This is the part where I snip it completely too short, and uh, we never manage to save it. We we'll have to start all over again. Oh yeah, we didn't fail yet. So the goal is to just fold these out so we can solder them straight to a couple of the legs of a switch while after we've poked the switch into the holes. We need to make strip this just a little bit more. Just strip it a little bit without cutting it. Ah, oh, that went from well. Good. I really don't want to accidentally cut this wire. That would be a very bad day. I need to cut the other one just a little, little, little bit. Just strip it slightly further back. There we go. That's two reasonably stripped wires, which can go out two of the holes which are going to be holding the switch in place. And this thing is plastic on the underside so it's going to work well. So if my plan is correct we can just push this switch into these holes and it's going to sit reasonably well. And it's taking a lot of force to actually push that in place but it is it seems to be happening. Ah. Yeah, that's poked on there. And now 
can just get our tweezers and poke the wire onto one of the legs and solder that in place. That's one. Now that's another and uh, there's a bit too much too much ins insulation on that one, but I think I think we can make it work in a way. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Let's just put some flux on there and uh, then solder it with uh, uh, actually a proper solder. I don't want to use the giant sol giant meme solder for this because it's just gonna make a big mess. And just a tiniest bit of flux. These buttons love sucking flux up, so you really don't want to use too much because it's gonna get inside the button and they, they, then they just go horrible. So this is probably going to be a big mess of melting plastic. Someone says, I just came in, what have I missed? Uh, I'm afraid you've missed pretty much everything. We've completely disassembled this headphone uh, and uh, we're just mounting the replacement power switch because the original was completely broken. That's one lead soldered. And the other. So, if we put batteries in this, it should now work. And we should get classical music coming out of this when we press the button. Here goes nothing. Hey! Do we have classical music? We've got classical music. It's at rather low volume, but I'm sure you can hear it. Can we, like, turn it up on the MD player? I have no idea what the volume control for this thing even is. Uh, volume. Uh, it's already maxed. Do we get more if we plug in the headphone thing? No. Well, okay. I'm assuming it's just a rather low dynamic, uh, low volume on the uh, recorded MD. But this is working quite well. So now we just need to trim the leads, get rid of the batteries, because these are not rechargeable. And we don't want to drain those. Uh, oh yeah, we need to clean the flux off before we install just a little bit of hot glue to keep the bottom firmly in place. Uh, where is my alcohol? Where is my alcohol? Where is my alcohol? Where are my Q-tips? There my Q-tips are. <laughs> Clean the area up nicely from, from both flux and like human goo left over from a previous owner. Cut the excess off of this lead because there's a lot of it. Snip. That ought to be pretty good. And we'll just put just a tiny, tiny dab of hot glue on there to keep this nice and secure. Mm 
This is pure quality. Let's hope we're not melting the button doing this. I want to really make it adhere properly by adding a lot of heat around here so the hot glue doesn't peel over time as it loves to do. Well, there we go. I think that's good. I think we have repaired this thing not worth repairing. Oh, it, that's not the title. It, what's it? Things not worth fixing. We have fixed this thing not worth fixing. So that just leaves us with cleaning these horrible earmuffs up and the horrible headband, but uh, I'm pretty good at that, so that'll be done in no time. People keep saying epoxy would be much nicer. Yeah, but I still don't like the smell of epoxy. And I can't be bothered waiting for it to dry. And these, frankly, these headphones are so cheap and horrible, they're not worth the cost of the epoxy going into them. <laughs> They're probably also so obscure you can't even get new earmuffs for them if you try. So we need to clean these up nice and proper from all the horrible crap previous owner left on them. Someone says, bloody hell, FF, who do you think you are, Louis Rossman? No, he wouldn't never waste his time on garbage like this. He would be too busy making money, which I am not, because these cost like 50 euros brand new. And we've just spent one hour, 17 minutes and 29 seconds on repairing them. Uh, and if I were to charge a customer, well, I'd be charging pretty much... Uh, what a new pair of these cost. So these are definitely a thing not worth fixing. And they're quite dirty and horrible and yucky. But I don't like paying for things and I need a pair of wireless headphones so I can deal with just a bit of yuck on them. These are cleaning up quite nicely. Like all the white horrible crap that was on them has come off. Has come off quite nicely. You can see that they are worn and used but uh, they're not full of like skin. Now we just need to clean the headband as well. That's going to be a bit worse. Yuck, look at that. Yuck. That's probably not going to come off all that easy. We'll give it a go. We'll just rub it really, really hard. Just rub it so incredibly hard up and down and left and right all the ways. Rub it all over, oh yes. Rub it with plenty of fluid going everywhere to dissolve all the dirty, dirty crap in the oh god, my paper is dissolving. This is not this has not gone well. <laughs> oh well. I'll just wrap this in something. Yeah, my paper does not like the texture of this, like, headband thing. My paper is becoming a part of a headband. Some of the dirt is coming off, though, so that's good, but uh, 
I'm quite sure there's more paper going into the headband than there's dirt leaving the headband onto the paper. That little camera is not revealing enough. This looks so horrifying. Jesus. <laughs> this looks so incredibly wrong. Ugh. Come on. So this is not looking too nice because there's all the paper there, but most of the dirt which was on there has actually come off. So I'm not too disappointed. This paper usually just falls off as long as uh, we allow it to dry. I just need to wipe it a bit more, right on the edge. Mm -hmm. YP YP Keeping it clean. Okay, I think that's enough for the time being. Let's try and reinstall the earmuffs and uh, give this thing a listen and a feel. See what it actually feels like properly assembled. Getting these guys on can be a proper pain in the arse sometimes, though. We'll see what we can manage. Yeah, this is going to be a pain. This is going to be a pain. Are these symmetrical? Are they symmetrical enough? Are they asymmetrical or do they just have poor manufacturing tolerances? I think they just have poor manufacturing tolerances. Yeah. This is such a cheap set of headphones anyway. Ah, getting this on is not going to be easy. Oh god, I pressed the wrong thing. Ah, this is... Ugh. This is not fun. I'm sure there's some headphone audiophile hobbyist guy just screaming at me right now, no, you're doing it all wrong. As opposed to slide it some super specific way. Gah. This is just... There we go, I think we're getting somewhere. Just working it around the edge. Snap, that did not sound good. We are past the snapping phase. These things should not be going snap at me. Okay, that's one muff on. Someone says screw them on. Okay. We will screw them on. I can see that working. That gave us a decent start at least. But I think for the final run we'll just have to use brute force. Uh, they seem to be rather resilient for this. I'll just use a lot of brute force. Yeah. That's on. That on. What's left and what's right on these? 
Does it say left? Uh, how do I get on camera? There we go. That works. My hair is going to be completely full of paper. These are not bad, bad feeling headphones. So let's get the batteries in again and uh, see if they work. Let's see, let's install some batteries into my head. Booting up. Okay. And where's the button? They won't pop. Ah, oh. uh, having the most beautiful oral experience here. A lovely mini disc classical music is just swooping me away to a beautiful place full of green grass and little hopping bunnies. Oh. Excellent. These work pretty good. It's really still if I have like blue LED shining all the time though. Just listen to that. And I think we ran out of track. Yeah. But these guys work. We have successfully fixed a thing not worth fixing. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, the charging base is just going to work fine. S since I have no reason to believe it wouldn't. Let's see what happens if we just put them on the base. Do they turn off them? They do not turn off when you put them on the base, so that's a bit dumb. Maybe they need to have a rechargeable battery in them for that to work. Let's see, I have a couple of rechargeables going here. Let's see. If a rechargeable, so I'm going to help. It does say, um, use only Philips short end, sh um, sorry, use only Philips short end sleeve rechargeable batteries. How about, oh, I see, I see. Oh wow, this, this is some shady shit right here. Oh wow, Philips, you naughty, naughty boy! Philips, you naughty, naughty boy, let's have a look at what they've done here. Oh, that is... That's not okay, that's... wow. That's not right. So, we have... this label that says... Use only Philips shortened sleeve rechargeable batteries. And that's because they have extra connectors there. See those? So that's the normal battery connector and this thing connects to the sleeve to tell the bloody thing they're rechargeables. So you can't, it, they're, they're too cheap to use any kind of voltage detection. They just want you to use their special batteries. Because obviously the wrapping on any normal rechargeable is not going to allow that connector to make contact. Well, I say screw you, Philips. We'll make our own Philips shortened sleeve rechargeable batteries. What's happened to my camera? What's happened to my camera? I want to stay with a microscope. We're going to make our own. Screw you, Philips. That is cheap. That is so cheap. Do these actually even have a label? Or is it just printed on? Oh, yeah, they do have a label. So, this is how you make your own Philips shortened sleeve rechargeable batteries. 
you take a knife roughly there and uh, I think that's going to be good. That's such bullshit. Such utter bullshit. I have no idea if this battery is even any good. Because it doesn't matter, it's rechargeable headphones. I don't need super good batteries, I need a proper knife blade for this. Where have I put my proper knife blades? I have no idea where I've put my proper knife blades. I had my proper knife blades just the other day. But they have since disappeared. Oh, there we go. They are exactly where I put them. Where else will they be? The problem with living alone is you can't ever blame anyone else for anything ever. So that's one Philips shortened sleeve rechargeable battery. Let's make another Philips shortened sleeve rechargeable battery. If I can find it. Well, where the hell? There we go. Evil, 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 evil. Evil! Let's cut all the way around. Okay. So that ought to allow us to charge our headphones with our charging base. Evil. Okay, let's see what happens. We'll put this on. Oh. Hey, it's drawing a bunch of power. The LED went off, eh? So let's see if they actually turn, like I want them to turn off when I put them on the base. I'm hoping that's a feature. So now they're charging, and they're blinking for LED. Do we have audio going through them though? There's audio going. Put them on there. Dick with them till they start charging. And there's no audio coming through. Bobby, do they turn on? What? Do we have signal? Hey, this thing got done. Okay, now we have audio. I put them on there. And they go quiet. We take them off. And the audio comes back. Okay, this works well. There's even an L, a charge LED on the base. Oh, that's excellent. This thing works a treat. Even uh, use only Philips shortened sleeve rechargeable batteries. Come on, that is so evil.
Like that's just going to make normal people take a razor to their batteries. And that's not going to end well in most cases. They're just going to manage to cut the whole thing up and make it go on fire like Big Clive did. Ah, oh, Phillips, you never cease to amaze with your low, low quality. So, uh, now I'm just going to take a quick look at the chat and uh, then we're done for this time being. Okay, let's just... Phillips did 7-Eleven. Oh, that's going to get us demonetized because we said 11. Wrap alfoil over the end? No, that's silly. Someone says, why ruin the batteries just for a set of shitty headphones? Because these batteries came out of some other shitty thing and they're not very good. Someone asks, do these streams not get uploaded or what? No, they do get uploaded. Like, I just rely on the YouTube automatic stream savey thing. And uh, I publish them like uh, after a done process. And it, it takes a while for the streams to uh, become processed enough for me to be able to choose a thumbnail and uh, publish them like having any idea what's going on. So that's, it, it takes like a day from the streaming to me get, being able to publish them as recordings. Someone says, thank you for the fun we had in the chat. Thank you for being here watching. Someone asks, are Philips actually Philips anymore? Depends. They do. I mean, they, they have like their own ecosystem of stuff. Like they have all their own uh, internalized uh, model numbers and stuff. S some of the thing is just a generic Chinese garbage. Some of it isn't. But yeah, we're pretty much done here, so I'll have to thank everybody for watching, make sure you enjoy yourself, and uh, I'll see you sometime in the future, maybe. Cheerio, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year, and whatever else you have going on.